welcome back all of you nanak here and then we are into a next topic on the procurement is a very tough topic is called uh, receipt accounting with the reconciliation actually fine we are going to see this now fine uh, so the topic itself is very tough and then i am going to add one more toughness to it by making a branch to be so it is a double tough fine so you have to watch it keenly and then i will not go fast i will not go slow only because since i know that the topic is really very tough and then i'll be going slow and then whenever you have any doubts please raise your voice so that i will not clarify it also it's not a easy one since you people have already there for the past four weeks of practicing purchasing so you may be having a very good amount of what happens idea about the enterprise structure and then how the pr works how the po works and then how they are all integrated together how the automation works everything is known to you so now with this knowledge we are going to make a deep dive into receipt accounting we are going to make it as you know fine so on the other day we have done the setups now fine so follow the setups exactly as i have done and then we are going to begin the activity today on the receipt accounting with the reconciliation so let me go there and then share my screen and then now people are asking for some information on this now fine uh, about my dumbs actually <clears throat> if you go there and click on it i will now go to the drive.google.com to go there if you open up your folder so this is a folder actually a chat and go there so fusion procurement six fillers folder find double you want it and then if you open the folder you will now find one document on this in the bottom and what not so there is a open it's called fusion procurement and afterwards you'll be having download a d a doc, d a scm documentation dumps fine this is a word file actually Thirty two videos have gone now, fine. So the word file. So if you double click and then open up it, so you will be finding a link for this. Is <laughs> the link actually? And go there. So I will now select the link. So let me select the link, and then I will now paste it on a new, what about the new uh, one? <clears throat> on a new tablet. And go there. I'm not getting it. So you'll not be getting this thing now, fine. So in the bottom, you will now find one, uh, what about the Nana's useful dumps docs? Fine. You will now find one folder called Nana's useful dumps docs. Fine. If you double click on it. and then if you what happens is sort it by date actually when last modified if you click on the last modified last modified if you go on and see it now fine so it says october 7 2022 i will now make a ulta direction or no see fine uh, the directories are not getting changed actually fine whereas the files are getting changed so okay the the old dumps inventory po dumps and then inventory dumps fine they don't change at all whereas the files are changing fine you see inventory 2022 it is uploaded on november 21 this one is uploaded on october 7 likewise you can now see this <laughs> many of the documents have been copied only on october 7 actually uh, because i uh, took it from some other place and then copied over here fine what else and then you can now see some ap dumps also may be there no fine gl dumps from was asking fine uh, ebus dumps procurement fine fusion procurement dumps is there any ap dumps please inform the group now fine erp fin accounting flows no fine there is one accounting flows there whenever i get any useful document i'll be putting it over here actually <clears throat> So if you have a GL uh, rapid implementation is there, manufacturing, <coughs> go there, go there. Practice exam on auto planning center. Fine. The planning center uh, dumps are also there. Fine, have it on your phone. So see it. Fine, there will be so many useful things for you on your in this place. Have a look. And then make a modification to the last modified, and then see what are the latest one. So the latest one is what the inventory dumps twenty twenty two, which has been shared by Jyoti actually. And then we have one more inventory dumps on now. Okay, fine. Likewise, what happens will be getting now. Fine, this is the number twenty one. And then I have another one on the as a zip file or folder actually. So couple everything and then watch it. Any doubts on the dumps? Bala is clear now. Yes, sir. This is one which you are referring. Yes, thanks. Yeah. Thank you, Nana. Okay, and then go there. This is Nana's useful dumps docs. That is the directory. Now we'll now go for the today's session. Okay. We'll now go for the today's session. Any doubts? You please uh, talk to me directly if you are getting stuck anywhere. What happens? Uh, some two days before somebody joined. Who is that? I forgot the name. <clears throat> Whether he has joined or not. some two days back only one person or other yesterday only some one, one of them has joined now we'll be finding it very difficult today thank god so now we are going to begin our receipt accounting with reconciliation so i will now open up one of the document and go that one i will now go to what g core i will now go to the oracle cm training open it up and then i will now open up the fourth document additional docs records for on the oracle cm training my my heading is different whereas your heading is different right my heading is oracle cm training but it is uh, having 1 2 3 4 5 etc etc everything there so my heading is different and then you have to identify what is the heading of your non and then do it now additional docs records because for you uh, i have it is my common heading and then i will be pasting this to every new batch and one double click on it additional docs records for now i am now going to open up the vision interface structure the 03 now 03 is a one fine 03 the pdf file i am opening it up fine double click on it is a vision interface structure fine double click on it open up 
and then this is what vision has been configured we have a ledger called us primary ledger we have a chart of accounts called us chart of accounts and then we have a legal entity called us only so this time what i did is uh, below the main line of business i have now created a new business unit i am not going to create a new business unit that is called t01 business unit that is what i created and then i am now retaining the same master for maybe you also fine the master is 0001 only fine i am not maintaining it so the best practice is what share the master across multiple bus fine that is the best practice fine so i am not going to share the same master across this new t01 business unit fine that is what i made it and then i made a child org also is what t01 child org one fine i made i am now retaining the master and then i am now creating a new child and a new business unit fine this is my new line of business any doubts on this one my new line of business has got us primary ledger you have chart of accounts us one legal entity t01 business unit and then 000 is a master org and then t01 child org these are the entities of my new lab good so nobody has got it out right? so you are now very clear upon this so with this i am going to work upon so any doubts you ask me fine because it's very tough one and then how to configure such a branched business unit it happens right let us say the company has now opened up a new branch office in calcutta and then uh, there what happens we are having going to have a set of uh, what happens like your purchase offices you are going to have a set of sales offices your project team <laughs> your hcm team etc etc so you will be configuring calcutta as a new uh, what happens a business unit so whenever you configure that as a new business unit with the existing uh, what happens the financial entities we are going to see about how you are going to configure it actually <clears throat> so this is the one new business unit so let us now go there and then have a look at the new business unit now thank you connect i will not go there click on it i will not go on open up my new business unit and then show it to you about how it has been configured thank you connect <clears throat> and then go to the setup and made and then so and then do it now so go there click on it and then i have now created a location also what t01 lock one of the one i created and go to that i will not go to what manage percentage business unit percentage so manage business unit is the one i go there i go to the manage business unit and then query me t01 which i now newly created for this costing training actually so t01 and then click on search you are searching for it. so once when you search for it it will be getting it like that i will not click on the hyperlink of it and then have a look at it and then this is the name of the business unit and then it is now residing in this location and then i have made common as a default set because when you work on common you will not have much of a issue so but in reality what happens it will be on a different value default set right? the rds will be different in reality so in which case what happens you may have to even address the rds with the very many setups also right? learn from financials they will not teach you everything financials and then hcm team will not teach you a lot on if it is going to be a different rds <clears throat> so we will cancel so the business unit is now the next is what as soon as you create a business unit you have to give the assign busy busy if you click on that and then come to the fsm area i am in the fsm area i go to the financials now fine go to the financials in the financials i go there i will now go to assign busy busy assign percentage busy percentage busy percentage that is the next activity you are doing as soon as you create a business unit go there so i have now sc scope is already chosen so i can click on that task name otherwise you have to choose the scope fine click on the task name fine go that part and then since the receipt accounting is involving so many financial modules also i have enabled all the functionalities because i don't know which one is going to cause what now fine so i am not very much aware of it by the way and then remember my primary ledger is your ledger and then legal entity is us one legal entity you should never forget your entities of your new line of business my primary ledger is us primary ledger and then your business your legal entity is what us legal entity and i know enabled it so below legal entity this is required for costing it so when you put it what happens in that so this is not done then afterwards i will not show you the child org right the business unit is not shown any doubts on the business unit fine the assign busy busy is not done for everything and then i will not show you my child org which i created i have not created a lock fine the cancel let me go on and show you my child org <clears throat> fine go that so click on it i will not go to what you go to the search then go to the generic area the search fine go that manage inventory org and manage percentage inv percentage or percentage so go to the manage inventory org fine go that i will not show a new t01 org T zero one, and then click on search now. You go and search for it, and then you will not find that. This org, find that. Click on it. So you can now see this org is having a name, and then it's having a code of T zero one one, and then it is for inventory management, and then the business management business unit is T zero one BU. And this is the one. This is also the profit center business unit. Also. So below in Delhi, we can even have multiple PCBUs. Profit center business units can be multiple also. Right? That will be taught by a financial team. Right? Uh, I don't know much about it. Right? You can even have multiple. Maybe Tijil will be uh, talking about it. Right? Tijil already there. If Tijil is there, you can even what happens? Uh, come inside and then respond back. Right? Tijil may not be having time to what happens? Uh, sit with us now actually. Right? Whenever he finds time, uh, whenever he comes, what happens? You please tell me. I will also ask him questions. Right? So he is an expert because he is already working on uh, what happens? Uh, this costing only. His uh, favorite, his uh, normal working is on. He is a cost accountant. 
and then he is working for costing only fine so he knows much more than what i know <clears throat> so so this is the one so my child r is now associated to this business unit of t1 t01 business unit thank you this is coming thank you and that is the profit center business unit my l is legal this is the one my l is thank you it is now located on lock 1 and then i have already tied the child to this lock 1 using manage locations in the manage locations i will tie the organization to location and then if you click on the next i will now say which is a master so the master is going to be operations now. operations the master and then i have created a facility schedule which is going to work for 7 days actually fine because uh, you, the operation schedule will work only for 5 days saturday and sunday are a holiday so i had a doubt and so i created a facility schedule which is going to work for 7 days and i have associated the schedule to this inventory on So you can see with the T zero one business unit. If this is the primary ledger. This is your LLE, and then this is the profit center. You find all the four important things are available there. It, you should remember by heart it whenever you are branching out from your main uh, uh, lab to a new branch to lab actually. Good. Fine. I am now branching on a existing uh, what happens the vision now. So take on it. So the inventory org is created. Then afterwards what happens I did what happens I created only one sub inventory for this exercise now. Fine. So go to the manage sub inventory to look at it. Sub inventories and locators. So go to the manage sub inventories locators, and then I created only one sub inventory for this. So go there. It's a T zero one one. So we don't need any data access for sub inventory creation. And data access is not required. So there's only sub underscore one is the only one I bring. Then afterwards to work on it. Fine. Since we are now going to work on a new child org. Fine. If you are going to work on vision org like zero zero one or zero zero two zero three three. Fine. No data access is required from inventory perspective. But if you're going to work on a new child, then data access is required. Inventory has got four roles actually. One is what the inventory manager, one is the receiving agent, one is the warehouse manager, and then one is the shipping manager. So in this exercise, we are not going to ship anything. We are only going to receive it now. Right? So we are going to use the inventory activity as well as we will now receive it. So we need inventory manager role. We need a what's called a receiving agent role as well as the warehouse manager role for this training actually. In reality, you need everything because there won't be any vision at all. Vision will not be available. So, if you are working on vision, then vision's uh, what happens? Yeah, uh, what happens? The compact role can be used. We'll now go on and have a look at it. Frankly, on the now, <clears throat> we'll now go to the secondary console and then have a look at the roles. Frankly, on it. We'll now get it from home now. I will now go to our tools and then I go to the secondary console. Go to the actual one. I will now go to the tools and then I go to the secondary console. Frankly, on the secondary console. And then I will now query my PRC ten as a user now. PRC. <clears throat> so, click on it. I will now go to the users now. Frankly, go to the users and then query the PRC ten. It's called PRC. Then make a search. Make a search. I'm not going to make a search. So here, uh, I'm not going to what uh, I go there. Click on the hyperlink of it, and then you will now have a look at the roles. What are the roles has been added? So I have now added the accounts payables manager, payable specialist, and special user because we are now going to get an invoice also for this trend. So we are going to get an invoice also. Thank you. So go down now. So afterwards, what happens if you go there? Go down. You will have a look at it. So here, the general accountant and general accounting manager is also present because we have to open the periods also because costing has got a period. So since costing is a period, I have added these two roles also to what are all the periods. And remember, they need a data access also. The general accountant and general accounting manager, I think I have not given it. I will not give it. Right? General accountant and general accounting need a, need a data access. I have not given it. Go down, open it. So go to this place now. Then afterwards, uh, we will not go there. So this OU SCM role is for all the activities of inventory for the vision. If you go there, click on it. I will not have a look at it. Now. In the block, find over there. I will not say vision. <coughs> So let me go on vision now. So we have what fifty eight is a vision roles now. Right? Double go on it. So if you're going to work on vision R, fine. This is a compact role. Fine. There is no need for any data access for working on zero zero one or zero zero two or zero zero three or zero five one except except for fine. No need to have any data access at all. Fine. Everything is provided for all the four roles. Fine. Your inventory manager, receiving agent, warehouse manager, and shipping manager. Everything is inbuilt on this one now. Fine. On this one, it is all inbuilt actually. Similarly. Procurement do not need any data access at all. Right? So that if you give PRC all, all the six pillars of procurement will work fully. Right? And if you want to work on it, on the visions entry, right? visions US one business unit, right? this one, this one, this one, and then all these organizations. If you want to work on the vision, then PRC all is more than sufficient for you to work on all the six pillars of procurement actually. And if you're going to work on any new BU or LE or whatever it is, then what happens? You need to have it. Right? So what are the roles you need? You need the advanced procurement requester for your requisition creation, and then the procurement manager is required for your what happens your purchase order creation. Supplier manager is required for supply creation, and then your procurement requester is created requ required for what happens self service procurement, etc. etc. We will now see the other roles which are required for other modules. Okay? 
other roles which are required. So those roles has to be added. If you are not working on the vision, fine. Otherwise, this is more than sufficient. Similarly, for the order management, if you are going to work on the visions entity, GSE role for ACM O2C is more than sufficient for working on this. No need to add any roles at all. This this itself is sufficient. It is a compact one for visions or visions uh, BU, visions LE, etc., etc. Is it clear now? Fine. There are the vision roles. And you're working on it, you can very well attach to your user these three roles when automatically it will now start to work hard for all the things. No need to have any data access at all. So, so now I have added this role point that not. So if you go on and see this, not click on it. So you now have it. So uh, you'll now go down find that not. <coughs> so you got a warehouse manager as well as your inventory manager also. Inventory manager, receiving agent, and then warehouse manager I've added because I'm now having a new org. The PRC all is there. And that. So, but here, what happens for making a purchase order, we need a procurement manager. Fine. Procurement. No, that is not required. Fine. Procurement manager is at the BU level. Uh, okay, I will not add it. Now. Fine. Procurement manager, let me add it. Now. Fine. Procurement manager is not there. Fine, let me add it. Now. So, procurement manager, let me add it. Click on edit now. <clears throat> and remember, the procurement manager do not need any data access. Procurement manager. <clears throat> because my BU is different, actually. Fine. Procurement, <coughs> procurement manager. So, let me go for the procurement manager. From there. So, what I want, I have no idea. So if the role is already added, it will not come here at all. And click on it. I will now select it and then click on add role. So because since my view is different, I'm now adding this also. I've added this also. So it is not added. So click on save and close by which what happens all the required one. Procurement manager is sufficient because I'm not going to go for requisition at all. If I go to requisition and I add, add the advanced procurement request also, because I will now be creating a requisition for my new child org actually. So then what it is, so I need it. But I'm not going to make any requisition for this exercise and go that point. This is the one I'm going to do it now. Fine, one. So I've added this procurement manager. Fine, go there. Don't go there. Don't go there. Come on. Click on save and close by which what happens if I'm not completed. The procurement manager is also. Fine, click on that. And then afterwards, we had to give a data access also. Don't go on and give a data access. You go to the setup and maintenance, and then it will now give a data access for us. So these are the basic setups when you branch on a BU now. Manage data access. So manage data access for users. So manage data access for users. Right? Manage data access for users. And then I will now show you the users. I will now put the PRC10. 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 Users with the data access. Now the radio button has been moved from this place to this place. Fine. Click on search. Now. Fine. Click on search. We will not find it. So go there. And then here, uh, I have not given for what your general accounting and general accounting manager because I had opened the periods actually. Let me do it. Now. Fine. I have not done it. Let me add the general accounting and general accounting manager for my what I was using. Now. Fine. Click on plus. Now. Fine. General accounting and general accounting manager is required. So I will now say it's a PRC10. Fine. Data access is user specific. Actually. It's user specific. On that. I will now put general accounting. General accounting. So go there. General accounting manager. And go there. So click on a data access set. And go there. So the data access set is what? If you go and then see, it is on US primary ledger. So no need at all. That is why I am not added. For a US primary ledger, I don't need a data access set at all. I don't need this. So this is not required. That is why I am not given. Thank you, cancer. So the general accountant and general accounting manager, I don't need a data access for this because it is inbuilt actually. It is inbuilt and then I don't need it. If I am going to use a different ledger, or different CVA or different legally, then we need. That is why I have not given it. That is why I have not given this. I forgot this. So the data access is now given for your inventory manager for T01 point barrows, T011, and then your uh, what's called your inventory manager for T011, and then your receiving agent for T011. So these are the things. Uh, and then for the costing, I have now given the cost accountant for the T01 business unit as well as what was your business unit. So cost cost accountant for business unit, and then the cost accountant for cost or and cost or. The cost accountant for cost. So cost accountant has got two what I'm data access, one for the business unit and then one for the cost of. So those things also have been added. So click on that. And then if I have missed anything, I will now again come back and then do it. Since I have added one extra rule on this now, fine, let me log out on that. <clears throat> so sign out on sign in. So the, the procurement manager has been added now. Fine. Come on, sign out. Fine. Click on confirm. So go there. So now now let us now go and then create our item actually. So we are now going to create a Cost test item. Fine. Till now, are you all clear upon how I have made a branch to be you with the setups? Anybody can say yes to me. Yes, ma'am. Very good. Okay. Thank you. Now let us now go there and then create an item. Click on the favorite icon and then I have already put it on the product information management. And then I am now going to create an item. So a new item I am going to create. I will now create it. And then you must remember your love. Your love must be by heart, actually. 
Anybody can tell me what is my child arc? What is the name of my child arc? It is zero one or zero zero two or zero zero three. T zero one. T zero one one. Fine. T zero one one is my interface. What is my C O A? What is my C O A? Yes, chart of accounts. Yes, chart of accounts. Yes, chart of accounts is my C O A. Fine. So you must remember the entities of your lump. The the business unit is T zero one business unit. The child arc is a T zero one one. The legal entity is U S only. And what is your master arc name? <clears throat> Operations. Operations is very correct now. Fine. Operations is the master arc name. Fine. In my new lab, on my branched lab, master arc is common with the existing one. Master arc is shared across multiple labs actually. Go there. Fine. Go there. 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 So product information management. Let us now go on and create a variety. So go to the create now. So in this place, I have to put what T zero one one or what exactly I put the organization name. Anybody? What is the organization name? Add. Zero zero zero. Zero 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 is very correct, fine. Right? Because the master is going to be common for all of us. Zero zero is operations, and I'm going to put operations. So the rule in class fine. So let it be any template. Doesn't matter fine. Now giving a warning fine doesn't matter because product tough people are working upon it because of which you are getting this warning fine. Go point. So I will now say it is what P zero one zero one underscore cost underscore test fine. That is the item. Fine. P zero one zero one cost is the item. Take off it and then put the description. Basically. So I will now go to the specifications. This is okay. Each primary, primary, everything is okay. Fine. Go to the specifications. In the specifications, I go to the purchasing. Now, fine. Go on the purchasing. Then go to the purchasing. In the purchasing, what about the the item defining attribute of purchased and then the the status attribute of purchasable must be on. Now, fine. These two things are on. So they will now make the item applicable uh, uh, available on the purchase orders. Fine. I will now give a list price of two dollars. So two dollars a month. And then for the receiving, what happens? You always make enable. Fine. These are all additional attributes. Fine. Make it as yes. And allow substitute, allow unordered, and then express and cascade transactions ready to come. It will be coming soon. So make it. So these are additional attributes in the item. Fine. So this much is sufficient. Now, fine. Purchase prices too. Fine. Go there. I will now assign it. Fine. Go to the associations, and then I am going to assign it to zero zero one or zero zero two. Anybody? I am going to assign it to which arm? Zero one. Zero zero one. Zero zero one is wrong. That is not my lump at all. My lump is not having zero zero one at all. T zero one. T zero one. T zero one. Right. T zero one. Yeah, correct. T zero one. It is having T zero one. Remember, I, my lab is not having zero zero one at all. My new lab is not having it. So I had to put it out T zero one. Make a search. Thank you for search. I will be associating with this. <clears throat> so click on it. Apply and done. It is not done. So the item is now created with the two dollars as the list price. I will not go there. I will not. What happens? Make a what happens? Save and close. So by which the item is now created. Now. Uh, I am unable to hear you. Tell me again. Simple. Can you Simple. tell me? Oh God, your voice is breaking. Actually, can you keep your mic on and then speak for some time? You have to receive routing. Yeah. Receive routing is not required on the item level. So I have already shown you everything. Fine. So that will be coming under the receiving parameter. Fine. So it will be defaulting from that. Item also will not default. And then I have given you a document also from where and all it will not default. Fine. Please again, whenever you are watching the video. Please take notes. Otherwise, it will be very difficult. It's a very huge one now. Fine, you cannot remember it. So manage percentage. Fine, receiving percentage, para percentage. Fine. So manage receiving parameter. The one fine go to place. And then I have already set up the receiving parameter also. This or fine go there. So T zero one one fine go there. So it doesn't need any data access for this. I click on OK. I have already set up. So the receipt number is what three thousand is the next number. It's already set up. So receiving parameter one here. It is the standard receipt that will now flow into the purchase order if item is not having a receipt row. If item is not having a receipt, fine. Now we are going to test what happens the costing now. Fine. Costing setup, everything is now now. So we will now first of all make a miscellaneous receipt, and then we will now push it into costing, and then cost it. Fine. Click on the home icon. I go to the inventory overview. You know, fine. Click on the inventory overview, and then I am going to make a miscellaneous receipt for this. Now. Click on it. I will now go there. So click on it. I will now go to the create miscellaneous transaction, and then I want to make fine. Now I have an access to P zero one one, so there is no coming out automatically over there. Nothing. It's already there. Fine. Click on it. My access is okay. Fine. Over there. I will now say misc and then give a tab. Is the miscellaneous is fine. Click on it. I will now go there. Click on it. Since accounting is involved, I will now see what happens. I will now go to what uh, notepad. <clears throat> so notepad. Sir, in the oh. item level, uh, the cost profile, whatever you used to say, no need to map there. Uh, no item level, we never mentioned any cost profile at all. We are now given at the default cost profile for the org only, cost org only. Okay. Fine. I am so not that... given item level. Fine. You are going to if you want again because that will be all be explained by Tijil in his course. Fine. Okay. Absolutely. 
he will not explain everything fine i'm not going into in depth of the costing actually fine trijil will explain you everything fine item level cost profile everything he will not explain you in this trip so go to the offset account fine this is the offset account i'm going to be fine so go there inventory valuation to offset is the one which is going to hit upon this miscellaneous result so fine i'm not going to search no fine search i will not choose one of the account you know get i will not keep it at fine so i'm not going to take a copy of this account so this is the offset account you know paste it here 10, is offset account. So, yeah. <clears throat> so I not said so offset account. So here current item cost. I'm not item is not having any cost at all. So I will not say no to it. And then I will not give a cost to it. Item cost is no. Fine, click on plus. And then I will not give a cost. It is a, a perpetual average. Fine. Now, now we are given the perpetual average as the costing method actor. I will not put T0101 and then give a tap. The item will be coming automatically. So more than two <clears throat> So the item will be coming, and then I will not choose only one sub inventory. We have only one sub inventory. Fine, drop it down, and then I will not choose the sub inventory. I will not go for hundred commodities on this. No, fine, click on hundred commodities. I know to go to cost the product now. Fine, since the current item cost is null, fine, click on the any details. I will not say what is the cost of this transaction. The miscellaneous result is now getting costed at this price. So there is a enter cost details on the unit cost. Fine, click on it. Click on the hyperlink, and then here what happens? I have not shown you one more thing. Fine, when purchasing is now involved. I will not go to the one. Right? Go to the after the same training. Right? I will not open up the fusion procurement documentation, and then I will not say manage cost elements components. Right? So if you go there, so whenever a purchase order is now created, these five elements will now flow from the PO into our costing system actually. But when you make a miscellaneous visit, what happens? Your item price and non-recoverable tax are the only two elements which will now flow right? for a miscellaneous visit. And then for each and every transaction, uh, Tijil has got a complete list actually. And then I will. He has taught me about the interop transfers on the accounting. I will not show you how many accounts will hit once when you perform an interop transfer. Number. He has no one. So for a miscellaneous one, item price and non-recoverable tax are the one which will now flow into the system. Now. Can I go there? Can I go to go there? Fine. Click on plus now. <clears throat> I don't go there. And then drop down. You will now find item price and non-recoverable tax is coming. So I am not going to give one item price, not non-recoverable tax. Fine. Item price is going to be two dollars. Two dollars. Fine. Click on okay. You know that. So two dollars the one. So we are now costed this miscellaneous result. Four hundred commodities. Any doubts on this one? Good. <clears throat> so go there. It is not costed. Fine. Click on OK. And then we are not on the costing. Fine. By giving any details, I have now given the costing. Fine. Click on submit. So these hundred quantities are now going to go into this. Now we are now going to push it into the costing model to cost the product. <clears throat> so click on submit. So the submission, the miscellaneous result is now getting completed with this offset account. Now. And this is the offset account. <clears throat> so now for every time we have to give this uh, cost details. Of course, this account offset account has to be given now. Fine, but again, talk to the financial. So, fine. Every time you have to give it because if you don't give it, it will not, it will not allow it. No, no, for item price. I'm talking about that. item price not necessary. If you don't give it, we can even say use the existing cost. So, okay. if you're using the existing cost, it will not take the existing cost. Now, I know overriding the existing cost because the existing cost is zero actually. Uh, and in projects, now no, we will set the cost, and which might be different from item price actually. Uh -huh. Right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, he's saying that we'll be setting the cost. Okay, fine. Mohammed Alam is also a financial guy. It seems fine. He's also adding adding some value addition. So he's saying that every time you need not have to cost your miscellaneous result. Right? And he can even say no. And then he'll be setting up the cost in the cost area. I'll not show you where exactly he's going to. We'll not come to that. Fine, that part I'll not take it up last now. And again, if you attend Tijil training, he will be giving you a very systematic method of uh, of the teaching it. But I'm not going in a random manner. Now, what happens? I'm going to push it into the costing area. Fine. I will not go there. Right click and then duplicate. Fine. Go there. So click on duplicate. And then here, let me push this transaction to the costing area. Fine. Go there. I will not go to the place. Fine. Click on it. I will not go to the monitor process. Fine. Go to the monitor process. And then I'm going to push the data into the costing area. Now. Fine. Go on. So click on the schedule new process. Fine. So the concurrent or the ESS job to push the data from the what happens the inventory into costing area is what? Transfer cost. Transfer. Fine. Uh, transfer inventory to cost. So transfer inventory to cost is one. Right? Transfer inventory transaction. I don't, I'm not transfer transactions from inventory to cost. Right? This is required for your miscellaneous receipts, miscellaneous issues, account alias receipts, account alias issues, and then your sub inventory transfers, your uh, interop transfers direct and in transit, your transfer orders, and then uh, there are so many such inventory transactions. For all the inventory transactions, this is the only concurrent by which what happens the data will be pushed into the costing model. So you know, even the cyclic counting adjustment, uh, uh, physical inventory adjustments, everything, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, everything will be done via this. So whenever you perform the transactions on the inventory, you have to run this concurrent to push the data into the costing area. Thank you. Click on OK. 
we are not pushing it now so much we'll go that and then we have to say which is your cost or not i will not put my cost or over here this is a parameter which is required whenever you transfer it from what happens inverted costing but when you transfer from receipt to costing there is no parameter at all only for this we have a parameter so we are not parameter we cannot say find by which what happens it will be transferred so click on it so this concurrent is running so now wait for the concurrent to complete so once when it is completed the data of your inventory has been transferred into costing area now so transfer transaction between the costing is now running now so once when it is completed we will now go to the costing area we will now go there think about it i will now right click and then duplicate so that what happens we now have multiple tab regions over here so this is mainly meant only for the monitor process actually you know running so transfer transaction has got succeeded now we will now go there we will now look at our costing area right click on the home icon and then here in some instances what happens your costing will be coming as a separate one in the top what happens there will be a costing but here in the supply chain execution itself we have a receipt accounting as well as a cost accounting both are coming both are right otherwise what happens yeah, there will be a heading called cost accounting and then in which we will have the receipt accounting as well as cost accounting. so let us now go to the cost accounting and click on the cost accounting so the first activity is what we have to open the periods in the cost accounting what happens we have to open the periods let us now open the period first of all and click on the task list and then let us now open the periods so go to the what manage cost accounting periods now right? manage cost accounting period the one find by which what we have to open so go there before which let us now check whether the gl is open or not fine click on the home icon let us now make a check whether the gl is open or not <clears throat> so click on it since it is a vision what happens they always keep the gl open now fine click on then like one go to the period close and then click on it now fine that so here uh, us primary ledger is coming automatically apart from that in the vision there are plenty of what happens the ledger are there fine the reporting primary use the rs back and all these things will also come without any data access actually without any data will be there you can now see the 11th month is already open and then the payables is also open so the payable period is also open gl is also open costing we cannot open from here we cannot open from here we have to open from our costing area only and the projects receivables payables assets assets is not a, whatever never open it doesn't matter we are not going to open first so so many financial modules periods are open along with the gl the general ledger they are all sub ledgers actually so we don't have to any worry fine we only have to open the costing period now fine gl is open payables open we can directly go on them open up our costing period and then for working on it there is no data access required for the us prime ledger because that is contributing to our base vision entity now right? us prime ledger is a base vision entity so we are not doing anything new and if you are doing though then we need a data access otherwise it's not required anybody is everybody is clear fine anybody can say yes to me because it's a very complex topic it's not yes, easy topic no. good 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 fine so if if it's a new or uh, new setup of which yeah 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 everything is required yeah yeah If, not, take... if you are not going to work on any of the vision entries, then what happens? You need what happens? The data access, the okay. role as well as the data access. Fine. For opening the period, you need the general accounting and general accounting manager. And then with the with the appropriate data access, and then open the GL, and then open the AP. Then afterwards come to the costing area. Since I am using the visions one, no need to what happens? Have any data access at all. Okay. So I will now go there. I will now go to the what? I will now go to the supply chain execution now. Fine. Go to the supply chain execution. And then here I will now go to the cost accounting. I click on the cost accounting and now go to the cost accounting. So I am in the cost accounting. So the first activity is to what? Open the periods. <clears throat> so click on it. I will now go there. So go to the manage cost accounting periods. I am now going to go to the costing one. So cost org. I will now say start with the T zero one. The T zero one. And then make a search. I click on search. So once when you search for it, it will now show only three periods actually. The current period, the next period, and then the next period. Current uh, prior period, current period, and next period. Only three periods it will not show. Fine. Both of them are in what never open. Fine. This is never open. Current period. The prior period is also not open. And then the next period is also not open. Fine. In inventory, in e-business, when you are opening the period, we can only open one by one only. Remember, one by one only we can open. So here also in the cost accounting, we can open only one by one. Whereas for the financial modules like GL or payables or receivables. Let us say uh, you are now opened only up to twenty twenty. Fine. Let us say uh, uh, December twenty only you have opened up. Up to December twenty two, we can open up every in one go. In one go, we can even open twenty four periods in one go for the financial modules, but not for the costing. Costing is exactly like inventory in EBS. So in inventory, we will now open up only one by one. Here also we have to open up only one by one. So go there. Select the line. Fine. Select the line, and then open up one by one. Fine. Good actions, and then open the target period. It will now show you the first period as what. One twelve, one twenty two only. Fine, click on OK. Fine. This is the cost star cost book combination. Fine, click on OK. So one twenty two is now open. It is now open. <clears throat> so one twenty two is now getting open for this T zero one cost star cost book combination. So we are opening the first January period. 
So once when it is open, then what happens? You go there, go to actions, and then go to open target period. It will automatically show you only two. If you drop down, there is nothing else. Available. Two, two, two is not coming. Right? Go wherever is not coming. Right? Click on OK. Likewise, only we have to open. Right? One by one only we can open. In EBIS also, we can open the periods of inventory only one by one. So this is exactly following the EBIS scenario for the costing mode. Right? We don't have any costing period in EBIS basically. Actions and then open target period. I will open the March. So March is open. Right? Go there. Click on. Keep on opening it up. And that. So it's now opening up on the back end now. It takes some time. <clears throat> so once it is open, it will now vanish, and then we'll now open up April. So you can see the prayer period now. What happens? The prayer period is what tenth month. Once when it is open, you will now find out the open signal now. Right? So go to the actions, and then go to open target. Now we are opening the April now. Thank you. Okay. April is now getting open. Go to the actions, and then go to open target period. Now May is getting open. Thank you. Okay. And May is open. Thank you. March period. So now go the open target period. So now open to June now. Thank you. Okay. The June is open. Good actions, and then go to open open target period. <clears throat> the July is now open. Thank you. Good actions, and then go to open target period. August is now getting open. <clears throat> And then go to actions and then go to target. So September is open now. Now the next period is what? The prior period of 10 October now. So click on okay. So once when you open up, you will now see the prior period, the status will now change to open now. And go to actions and then go to open target period. And then if you open up, you can now see the prior period will be changing to open now. And it's open. Thank you. So now when I open it up, 11th period will now go to open status now. Thank you. Actions. And then go to the open target period. So the 11th period is now open. <clears throat> and then next period is not at open. Likewise, you can do it. So we are now open the periods. Find the prior period as well as the current period. Up to the fine, we open up. Any doubts? Good. Fine, no doubts. So go there. So we'll now go there. Yes, sir. Uh, I think you already ran the costing process actually. Now you are going and open. I have not run the, the period, costing. Right? I have run the transfer cost from inventory to costing. So okay. all the transactions of inventory have been pushed into the costing area. Oh, costing process is not at run. Only just costing process is not done. Only transfer of what happens? Your transactions from inventory to costing we are running. Okay. Okay. Got it. Now we are now going to create a run control, and then we are now going to cost the product. We are now going to create the distribution now. No. We are now going to create the distributions now. No. So the distributions we are going to create now. Okay. So it's not done. Okay. So click on. What happens? We go there. So I will not keep on done. Okay. So the periods are open. Now we are going to create a distribution. In in e business, the distributions are perpetual. As and when you make it, the distributions get automatically created. Here we have to create it. Click on the create create cost accounting distributions. Click on the create cost accounting distributions. I am not going to create it. I will not create first of all a run control. Thank you, click on cost. I have to get a run control. I will now say it's a T01 underscore run underscore control. Run control. I am going to make it. And then we will now enable all the four actually. The pre-processor, the cost processor, the COGS recognition for order management, as well as the cost distribution. All the things will be coming. So this run control is going to be specific for cost book, cost or go to the actions and then here it add it is not coming. Fine, click outside and then it will not come. Fine, click outside, the add row will be coming because you must be coming out of the run control area. Fine, click on the add row. So we are going to add it. So go there, click on it. I will now say T01 is the one, is the cost organization. And then here, what happens? We go there. It is the T01 and then cost book. And then the financial team will be running this only up to a certain, let's say January end or February end, like that they will be doing it. So user define, and then I will now put a cutoff date up to what date you want to do it. My ledger is coming, and so click on it. I will now choose thirtieth of this. So all the transactions which has now reached the costing area up to thirtieth, I am now going to do the costing. I'm now going to get the cost cost accounting. Fine, click on it. So click on it, and then now fine go there. So it is now then fine there. Click on save. My run control is now created. Now I am going to run the schedule process. So click on the schedule process. Now it will be running. So it will now create the costing distributions for whatever has come from inventory now. Thank you, it allows whatever has come from inventory, it is now going to cost you. Thank you on the schedule process. <clears throat> so go there, click on submit. So once when you submit it, this is a big process, 431. It will not take approximately two minutes to complete. 431. Fine. Go to the monitor process and then have a look at it. Fine. So the costing distributions are getting created actually for whatever has come from inventory. Now we have made a miscellaneous result. So what happens? Your item price. To, or rather, the inventory valuation to offset will be created actually. The inventory valuation to offset will be created actually. So it is not running. So it will not take approximately around two minutes. Now. We have to wait for it to get complete. In the meantime, what happens? I will now go there. I will now explain the PO process. Now. We are going to have the PO process to the PDP process. Let me open up the PDP process on the same fusion procurement documentation. I am now opening the file called PDP process. So here, <coughs> when you make a result in the gate, the receiving inspection will be hit on the data side. And then the contra entry will be AP accrual. AP accrual. 
So AP accrual is a, basically, it will be a PO accrual actually. It will be a PO accrual. PO accrual. And then once when you deliver into the system, what happens is the inventory valuation will be hit as well as the charge account also will be hit. The contra entry will be receiving inspection. The receiving inspection will be the contra entry. So the AP accrual is basically a notional liability. And then what happens, the AP or PO accrual, whatever it is fine, the notional liability. And then once when you make an invoice, this, what happens, the liability gets relieved over here. It will be getting relieved over here. And then that will be relieved. So many a times you will not relieve the entire one. Will have so many problems because of which, which one the quantity which, will not be relieved actually. No, no, which one represents PO charge account, which we have set up? Charge account is the inventory valuation. Inventory oh. middle is the charge account. Yeah. We are not setting the account till now. It is already already there in the system. Okay? We are not setting. Yeah, yeah. No, in purchasing we did. In purchasing we added. Okay. Yeah, you, you have seen that. The charge account, the accrual account, and the variance account is already set in the purchasing. So I am not setting it up. Yeah. Okay? Yep. We are already set up in the purchasing. And so I'm not using the same account because I'm using vision now, fine. Vision, I'm using it. And so I'm not setting up anything at all. So go there. We may have to set up, fine, go there. So click on what reference, then whatever the great cost accounting distribution is still running now, fine, go there. So it is not seeing, submitting the financial orchestration, fine, click on it. Now wait for it to complete. So go there, click on it. So refresh cost accounting reporting data, fine. So one concurrent has not given a lot of things, no, fine. So the cost accounting distribution has got succeeded, actually, and no succeed. Let us not go there, and then go to the place, no, fine, click on it. No, no, whatever. You go to the great cost accounting distribution, fine, click on save and close, and then we will know what happens. Review the cost accounting distribution. So click on that. What happens? I will not go to what? I will not go to the review cost accounting distributions, no, fine, go there. I will not go there. So I will not go to the review cost accounting distribution. So I created, I initially opened the periods, then I created the cost accounting distributions. Now I'm going to review the cost accounting distribution. I'm going to click on it. So click on it. And then I will not say item starts with, <clears throat> I will not say is the T0101. Is that T0101? The transaction on or after 19th, fine. Today is 26, it's okay, fine. And then otherwise remove all the unwanted fields and then make a search. Starts with, fine, click on search now. I will not show you that. What happens your distribution? <clears throat> so the distribution is now created. Now make a search. <clears throat> So it is the inventory valuation to offset or the accounting entries which will be hitting it now. So click on search now, fine. So it is already completed. So you'll now find an entry for what? A yeah, cost accounting distribution for this 100 quantities of a miscellaneous receipt actually. So it's not going to show me now, fine. So T0101 is the one item, fine. Item is starting on this now, fine. We can even put the cost or another things also, fine. So whichever way you feel like you can put it. And then it is not going to search because it's a very huge data on the vision. And so since a very minimal parameter has been given, it is not taking a longer time to what happens. Uh, retrieve the data from the database actually. <clears throat> I would have given a call. You know, got it. It is not fully costed, but not accounted actually. And then the miscellaneous result, and go there, on it. You'll now see what happens. 100 quantities are one, and go there each, and then go there, click on it. You'll now see what is the reference number. You'll now see it is asset. And then it is now use these valuation structures actually. And the cost profile also. You go down the bottom. If you go there, go to the cost information, you know, say, we are now made a cost at $2, fine, it's about $2 each. <laughs> and then if you click on the cost distribution, it will now show you the inventory valuation to offset it. So the inventory valuation is hit on the debit side, and then offset is on the, what on the, this great side, actually. Now, let us now create the accounting. The distribution is now created. We are now going to make an accounting. Fine. Go to the journal entries, and then we are going to create the accounting. As of now, nothing is done. So go there. Remember, you have to succeed on fully costed. And remember, it is the responsibility of the supply chain team, what happens to see you that when, so when they run, they will now only run the distribution. And then if it is not fully costed, they will only ask you whether you have set up everything properly or not. Fine. Accounting is okay. Accounting also, they will not tell you. Nowadays, what happens, even accounting becomes a SCM team's responsibility, even though it's a financial activity, but it is now, so you have to know which mapping set has to be set properly. Otherwise, what happens, it will not be getting accounted also. So you have to learn it fully. So Tijil will not teach you everything regarding how to set up the different mapping sets, how to set the different accounts. I have now made only a simple one of what miscellaneous result of what hitting the, what's called your, these two accounts now, fine. One is what? Inventory valuation to offset. Fine? So, so many other transactions there. So you have to learn, you will not teach you everything fully now. Here's uh, 20 hours of teaching. It will not give you everything on the supply chain accounting. So click on it. I will now do the create accounting. So go there. So in the accounting part, I will now click on the create accounting and then I'm going to create accounting for this miscellaneous result. Now. So subletter application is cost accounting. I will not go to the cost management. Ledger. What is the name of the ledger? Anybody? B uh, T01 ledger, ledger or not? Ledger. US, primary US, ledger. Ledger. US primary ledger. US primary ledger. Fine. The primary ledger is US primary ledger. Fine. You should not forget the entities of your lab actually. Fine. 
whether final or I will not make it to the detail now. Let me post it to GL also. <clears throat> and post to GL and click on submit. I'm going to run it now. I click on submit. I'm not running it. Click on it. So it is not submitted. So I click on okay now. It's not running. We'll now go to the monitor process and have all that. So if the transactions are completed, it will now do the import child also. Import journals will also do. So if the great accounting is now, if the, if, if all the accounting is set properly, it will now what I'm as a run what the journal import also it will not run. <clears throat> so great accounting is not running. We will now see uh, whether it is not running the journal imports or not. Otherwise, it will be creating an execution report in which what happens, it will not tell you what exactly the error actually. So post submitted journal is now running. So this has to trigger a journal import actually. If all the accountings are properly set actually. If the accounting are not set properly, then what happens in this area, and you will now see what happens in this area, you will now see it is not, what happens not accounted, it will now land up an error actually. The accounting status will not land up an error actually. And it. Fully costed and then accounting status will be ending up an error. Check on that. You know how it create accounting execution report is running. That means what it has not it has not imported the journal at all. That means there is a mistake now. Click on it. You know how to look at it. What, what is the problem in this? So how a look at the report? Fine. Report can be published actually. So without importing the journal child, it has now printed the report. That means what there is a problem. <clears throat> we'll now see what which account has not been set actually. Click on it. Don't go there. So click on the report and then have a look at the report. Click on the report. And then here, what happens? You go down the bottom. I will not publish the report and go to the I'm not going to publish the report. So click on the publish report. I will not export it to what? Go there, export it to PDF. PDF, I'm exporting it. No coming over here now. So how to create it? Huh? How to create the accounts customized mapping sets now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That will be taught by Tijil. Fine. How to create a customized mapping set? It will all be taught by Tijil actually. And I'm now using the visions one only. So go down. It will now say that there are some transactions that's under on the US primary ledger. The input source does not map to any output value set in the mapping set on the inventory valuation. Inventory valuation is having a problem. So that means what the new org which I have created, the inventory valuation has not been set actually because of which you are not getting this problem. Actually. You will now see there are plenty of information that fine. He will be able to, he will not teach you about how to read all this information. So, but here itself it will now say inventory valuation for our P011 org is not properly set because of which is the error actually. So click on it and go there. So you can even see in this place also. And go there. If you click on search again, it will also the status is error now. And click on it. So the accounting status will not come to error now. And click on this. The accounting status will not show as error now. The accounting status will not show as error. <clears throat> so now I'm not going to use the seeded mapping set used by Vision actually. But in reality, it won't be fine. They will all be creating the custom mapping sets. The financial team will be creating the custom mapping sets. And then you have to set up everything on the custom mapping set. <clears throat> So that will all be taught in the Tijil's training actually, how to create everything. So we are not searching for it, not clicking on it. Oh God, the instances become slow. <laughs> if it becomes slow, it will be very difficult actually. I now opened it up on three different places actually. <clears throat> I now opened up on three different places. So let me go there and then see. So it's still coming. It's not an error actually. So you go there. If you go to the journal entries, you cannot see the error actually. And click on the journal entries, you cannot see the error also. In this place also, it cannot show the error. So the inventory valuation is not set properly set actually. So we'll now go there, click on it, go to the next one. I will now go to setup and maintenance, and then we'll now start with the setup. Click on it. Setup and maintenance, and then let us now set up the inventory valuation. So click on it. I will now go to the search. search. I saw not search. I will now go to the ma mapping set. Now find the drop it down. And then here. What happens? I will now go to the what financials and then go to the not financials, sorry. I will now go to the manufacturing and supply chain management. So go to the manufacturing and supply chain management and then go to the manage mapping set, right? Manage percentage, right? Map the percentage, set percentage, manage mapping set, and then go to the cost of it. Let me query for the inventory valuation. So the cost management scope is very correct. I click on the manage mapping set and then let us now query for the inventory valuation. I will now set up the inventory valuation. Inventory valuation and the So the inventory valuation, then click on the hyperlink of the inventory valuation. This is for financial accounting. Number. Go to the US chart of accounts and go there. I will now go down and go there. So for all the orgs are there, my org is not there. T011 is not there. So let me take a copy of it and then I will now set up the same account. So go down. I will now take a copy of this account. So I take a copy. I will now click on plus now. I click on plus and then I'm going to add my org. So my org is what? Is the capital Z 011. So the sub inventory is what? Put a star here. 
and then for the category you should not put a star but from the drop down you have to choose the star now for the category costing category you drop down and then choose the star star is available don't put the star manually sometimes it will not work i will not place this and then put the star over here and then i will not put the chart of account over here it's not available. star means never sir star means everything all, all. star is a white card okay. it is a common for any, any application no, same thing is applicable here okay. star is a white card star means for anything so we are now entered an inventory valuation account for this now fine for that so click on save and close it is not done now let us now go there and then run again now fine go to the review cost of funding method and let us now run the create accounting again now so click on it so it is now set now fine so click on create accounting <clears throat> and we have to create offset account also offset account is not required i will not say why is not required fine because we already given on the transaction itself the offset account has been given now fine otherwise here also it will be there now fine go there So here also it will be there. The management set fine. Go to the offset now. Fine, no see. Uh, I will not query for the offset. And go to the offset and then make a search. Fine, click on search. In the transaction itself, we are given an offset account. We will not see if that is not there. It will not pick up from this place now. Fine, go to this place. So uh, if that is not there, it will not pick up. Here also it is not there. But on the transaction, we have a offset account, so it will be picking up there. Otherwise, it will not come over here. Fine. Since on the transaction we already given, so there is no need to set up the offset account explicitly here. And then miscellaneous. So I will not go to the space bank for it. I will not go to the space. I will not do the credit accounting again. I will not do the credit accounting. Click on the credit accounting. I will again do the one. It is the cost management. I choose the cost management. And then the ledger is what U.S. primary ledger. I will not put the primary ledger. Fine. I don't know about this process category now. And talk to Tejal. He will not tell you. Fine. I will not make it the detail. Fine. Post is here. SS now. Fine. Click on submit. So this time it has to import the journals. Four four nine is running. You go to the monitor process. And then we will not see whether the import journal is now running or not. The journal import has to happen because we are now given the inventory valuation. Now tell me what is the charge account name for the procurement? Anybody? What is the charge account name for for the financial accounting? It is inventory valuation, and for purchasing, it is a charge account. What is the name of the charge account? PO charge account. No. The mapping, management. Mapping set, mapping set name. I must. If somebody told me, come on, again, tell me. Material management. Material charge account. Fine. Charge material account management. organization. Material account organization. Then material account sub inventory. Fine. We already seen it now. Fine. Lot of things we have seen now. Fine. I will not show you what all things we have seen now. I will not show you what all things we have seen now. Fine. Come on. Come on. Go to this place. Fine. Come on. I will not show you. As far as the charge account is concerned, we have done a lot on this now. Fine. You go to the fusion purchasing accounting. Fine. Charge account can be set by different different means. No fine. Asset item and asset sub inventory. Fine. Go there. For this, what about the middle account? Uh, what about the sub inventory and then org level? And then for the expense account, for the expense account sub inventory and org level. So these are the six different accounts which you have to set for purchasing actually. For purchasing, middle account sub inventory, middle account organization, or otherwise expense account sub inventory or expense account organization. If you set it up, all the six we already tested. Remember? Yeah, this is. So that is for purchasing accounting. Got it. That is for the purchasing accounting. Hmm. You should not forget it. When I am running it. Nana sir, what is this offset account? Uh, offset is for financial. For the financial ones, what I am mean, there is the offset account. Now you see, mm -hmm. import journal has run now. Previously, import journal didn't run at all. It didn't run, and so what happens? That was the thing. So import journal has run. Now this time, import journal has run. So that means what? The transaction is successful actually. There is no problem at all. So if you go to the cost accounting, fine with that. So if you click on search now, fine, you will not say it is fully accounted. Fine, click on search now, you will not find that it is fully accounted. So accounting status will be fully accounted, fully costed, and then fully accounted because we are now given the inventory valuation. So click on search now, it will now come to what fully accounted. Now. So it will now come to what fully accounted. Come on, system is slow now. It will be going, and then there will not be any error at all. In the journal entries, what I was, if you go on and see, there was an error actually. It will be having a red color mark also becoming up. So it's not coming here. The one which we ran earlier, uh, which has gone to error, can't yeah. we uh, reprocess that? Do we need to? That is what we did. No? Fine. That is what we did. Oh, same thing. You reprocess there. We so, reprocess it, and then, now it has got final account. Okay. We reprocess the same only. We did the reprocessing of the same. Fine. It's not finally accounted. Go to account. And then, if you go to the journal entries, you will not see this. Click on journal entries. You will not see this. Not really. So here, it doesn't show any error on the what's called even this thing now right? on the offset account because the transaction itself is having a cost. Uh, the trans uh, oh no, journal entries. Click on and see. And click on it. Uh, it's not showing anything out there. So sometimes what happens? Uh, this is because of the problem. Display problems basically. 
I will not try to go to some other browser now. Thank you. Close these things now. Thank you, Monday. Go to some other browser. Browser. Now go to one Mozilla browser. And then here, I will not try to see this now. Thank you, Monday. In the Mozilla browser, I will not see it. Thank you, Monday. I will not go to what supply chain exhibition, and then I go to the cost accounting. <clears throat> I will not go to the review costing distribution. Now, thank you, Monday. No, 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 no. Review cost accounting, review cost accounting distributions. I click on the review cost accounting distribution. I will go there. So item starts with this is what's called T zero one zero one. I will now say cost or starts with T zero one so that you will be able to process fast actually. Right? Two queries we are given now. Thank you. Monica. So it might take much of a time. Transaction after ninety. No, it's twenty six. It's okay. So two queries we are given and then it will not process. And then the bottom will now go straight away and then have a look at what you are accounting. Oh, instances become slow means what? It is very, very difficult actually. <laughs> it is not even pitching me that it is actually. So click on search. It is not even pitching me that it is. In this browser, at least in the browser, in the other browser, it is not pitching me that it is. Item T0101, Nana. Starts with. No, T0101, right? No, T0101 only. T0101, at least search for it now. Oh, it is not even searching actually. What to do? This browser is very bad. Let me go to the Opera browser now. Thank you. I'm going to go to the Opera browser. <coughs> Where is the Opera browser? So this is there. In the Opera browser, let us now go on and search for it. Search for it. I will go to the supply chain exhibition and then I go to the it's called cost accounting. Cost accounting. And click on this. I will now go to the review cost accounting distribution. Review cost accounting distribution. Review cost accounting distribution. Cost of starts with T01. <clears throat> so item starts with the T01 nothing. And say starts with it. Yeah, so T01. So click on search. Oh God, it's not giving me results at all. Browsers are having a lot of problems. No, maybe you have to log out and log in. Maybe. Oh, maybe. <clears throat> okay, fine. Anyway, it is now fully costed and then accounted actually. It is now fully costed and then final account also. It is not coming here. Otherwise, what happens? It will be showing you the accounting entries. Maybe you can go to the GL area and see. You know? oh God, I don't know much about the GL fine. There. So it's okay. Fine. This part is now completed. Now we will now come to the uh, our procurement area. So this is all clear. Now, so inventory valuation to offset is not done. So let us now go there and then create our purchase orders. I'm not going to make a purchase order. Click on the home icon, click on the star icon, go there. So let us now go there. I will now go to the PO view and then let me create a purchase order. Since I don't know GL, so I'm not going over there. If you go there, it will not show everything. But again, the instances become slow and so what happens? It's not exactly responding basically. So click on it and then here, what happens? I'm not going to create an order. I'm not going to create an order. So go there. What is my procurement BU name? It is US one business unit or what? Anybody? T zero one business unit. T zero one business unit. Fine, sir. Is the T zero one business unit? I had to choose. I had to choose the proper business unit. Yes. And then in the supplier also, I have added one extra site actually. Fine, sir. So I will now say ABC Consulting. I have already added. Fine. I added one more site actually. Fine, sir. What? The supply side is going to come. So ABC US one has been added to the US one business unit. And I forgot to show you. Fine, sir. The location is coming automatically from the supplier. Lock one is coming automatically from the supply actually. So, there you go. so click on create now. So it is uh, what I mean the T01 business unit requisitioning also this one. Supplier is a ABC consulting, and then the supplier site is what ABC US one. I have added one more site actually. In the sites area, I have added one more site, and then I have kept the same name over here. Now fine. Here only uh, Avinash, I have a problem now fine. When I am running the receipt accounting reconciliation, I am not getting this site at all properly. Fine. You have to help me out. So I, when I created it, I exactly created the site name. Fine. I will not tell you, but when, when I get the error, I will not tell you. Fine. The receipt according reconciliation, I'll tell you. Fine. Click on create now. I'm not going to create a no, no, sir, this site, is, this, this site belongs to T01 business unit, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This site belongs to T01 business unit only. <laughs> I have now forgotten to show you the site. I will not show you. And anyhow, I had to go there and then show it to you. I will not show you. So go there, go to this place. I will now add the line. Fine. You can now see the, the, what happens, the, the, the ship location is the T01 lock one. Fine. The better location is also this one. I will now go that click on it. I will now set up the common options. Everything I will now set up. I will now go to the plus now. Thank you, plus. And then I will now create a maker. I will now create a purchase order for that. T0101 now. Fine. 01. T0101. The item will be coming now. Thank you. So, this is the one cost test item. 
I will not go for it. Say two thousand quantities. So quantity is two thousand. Fine. The price has to default. It is not defaulting. So let me give it manually. Fine. Right? The two dollars. So two dollars are manually giving it. I will not go to the schedules. And then I will not give the dates for this. Fine. Right? Quantity. I will not give the dates for this. So go there. When I want it, I will not say today itself. I know it. Fine. And then ensure that it is a standard result. Fine. Right? Quantity. I will not edit it. And then ensure that we are having a standard result. All of you understanding it? Any doubts? Fine. Standard result. So let's not go there. So the PO is ready for two thousand quantities at a price of two. So click on OK. <clears throat> I will not. What happens? You go there. Click on Save. By which what happens? This number is now getting saved. So the purchase order number is what? You go there. So we have variance account and charge account are not set. Both the things are not set because it's a new R now. Right? So new R is not set. So only the uh, what happens? So we will not set up the variance as well as the charge account. Right? So go there. You don't take a copy. Of it. And that we will now set up the variance and charge account. You can go there. You will now open up my what's called my notepad now. In the notepad, what happens? I will now say PO number. So the PO number is this one. The PO number. So the PO number. So let me highlight it. So highlight it. I will not. What happens? You go to the management. Yes, please mute your mic if you are not talking to me. If you are not talking to the group, please mute your mic. <clears throat> Hello, Srinivas Reddy, please mute your mic now. If you're not talking to the group, please mute it. Okay, good. I will not go there. I will not go to the what's called the charge the variance and then the invoice price variance accounts. As well as the other one is also not set actually. And accrual and then invoice price variance. Thank you. I'm not set up this. So we'll not go there and then check everything out. Thank you on the home icon. <clears throat> oh God, it is slow. Click on it. Will not go there. Go to the setup and maintenance. Will not set up everything else. The charge account first of all will go there. I will not go to fine. Go to the what's called your manufacturing and supply chain management. Then I will go to the management section. So manage percentage, map percentage, set percentage is the one. Fine, go there. So enter it now. Fine, the cost management is the one. Fine, for the cost management, I am going now there. So click on the management section. Fine, 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 management section. Middle account, the charge account. I will now open up. I will now see for the US charge, start up account. Fine, the US charge account. Fine, select it and then see what is the account they have given. So all these things are there. Fine, it is also not there for hours. Fine, so let us not take up. Fine, I will not take up. To take copy of it, I will go there. <clears throat> so take a copy of it now. I will not make an entry for our hours also. So click on plus now. Fine, let me make an entry for our hours. <clears throat> go there. It is there. P zero one one. If I go there, I will not paste it. So we are now entered the middle charge account is now entered. Now. So click on it. I will now give a save and close. Then what happens? I will now go to the variance account. Charge account is now set. Variance account. So it is the invoice price variance. Invoice price variance. These two accounts are giving a problem. Go to the invoice price variance account. No one find invoice price variance account. Then go back. Go back. I will now take up this account. Now click on it. Now go around. So this account find take copy of it. Click on plus now. Click on plus, and then go there. Is that P zero one one? And then I will not paste. Otherwise, if you give a star, it will be common for all the orders. So, company some companies will be having charge account, accrual, and variance account for every different org, every different account actually. Fine. If there is a case, we have to set it up. Otherwise, we can even put a star and then do it now. So, save and close. So, invoice present. We will now see the accrual account. Go to the accrual account. So, go to the accrual account. So, it's a PO accrual. Remember. Accrual, accrual account organization is the one. Accrual, you know how about that? Accrual account is there. So yes, channel account is the one. You know how about that? How they have set it? Accrual account. So there is a common account over there. Now, remember that the two two one zero. Remember that. So what I will do is I will now make it as what two two seven zero because two 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 one zero is for what your uh, uh, this is a liability account. You go on and see this is a liability account because vision is not properly set actually. If you go on and see. We have a liability account. Liability account is what two two one zero. The liability account is two two one zero. I will not show you. Fine. So I will not change this uh, PO charge account to what two two seven zero. No, fine. I will not change it to what two two seven zero. I will not make it. Uh, there is account available there as a seven zero. Fine. I am not making a change. So two 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 seven zero is my what happens? Accrual account. Fine. PO accrual. So two 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 seven zero is my PO accrual account. This account which is not going to hit now. So this one. Fine. This is a liability account is what two two one zero. <coughs> this liability will be two to one zero. It and will be set up in uh, supplier side, right, Nana? 
no 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 uh, it will be no, i will no. tell you this live red account i will tell you where exactly sir i will not tell you where exactly sir i will not come to that the live red account only so this the 22270 is my pivo library pivo accrual my pivo accrual is now set fine 22270 there is a common for all the org i have not identified that so click on it save and close so all the accounts are set and all the accounts are will not go there i will not go on that go to the edit documents then here what i was give a save now thank you now save and then this time when you validate it you will not have any error back and all the three accounts are set previously accrual was not giving any error because it is already having a value now we also changed the accrual also the charge variance and accrual everything is set accrual we have changed it now fine the pivo variance account charge account is now giving fine charge and variance are still coming now fine click on okay maybe because what happens you have to come out and then do it now fine click on cancel now cancel we already done it actually thank you for it otherwise we even have to log out and log in also we know log out and log in that is the best way now fine so in in such cases what happens it needs a log out and log in something what happens we need a log out and log in and click on confirm now then i will log in thank you i will not go inside and at this time what happens we now go and query our pivo So click on it. You know, query or view. <coughs> so go to the star icon. I will now go to the view overview. I click on the view overview. I will now make a query. Thank you for that. So click on the view overview. <coughs> I then query or view. I will now go to the manage orders. I go to the manage orders. So go to the manage orders. And then I will now paste this number. Now thank you. The order number is your. I will go there. So order number is available. Now take copy of it and go there. Click on it. So this is the order number. So I will now place the order number and then make a query. Place the order number and go there. So click on search. <coughs> now searching for it. So let us now edit it actually. So click on it and then I will now go to validate. So validation is the first activity you do. Now click on it. So now see whether it has now sensed the account or not. Go to the actions and then bring it to edit mode. So once we are in the edit mode, we will now check for the validate. Now find actions validate and click on validate. Now it has sensed all the accounts which you have set. So it has to give me everything okay. Is okay. Thank you. So click on the manage approvals. Let us see whether it is not uh, automatic or not. Otherwise, we have to go on and set up the approvals also properly. So yes, one six four five four seven is now getting approved now. Fine. It is the application developer only. Fine. Click on submit. By which what happens? The approval is now going to take place. Now the real activity of accounting is going to begin. It is very tough. After the break, we'll be having it. Now submit it. Thank you. One more time. We'll wait for it. So the real activity of accounting is now going to begin now. So go there to connect. Now go there to connect. I will now go to the manage orders or otherwise I will now go to other straight away go and then receive it now. Thank you. I will now click on the star icon and go there to connect. I will now go to the inventory overview and then try to receive it now. Thank you. Two thousand quantities I am going to receive at the price of two now. Remember. So go to this place and then here the inventory org is now coming as zero zero one. I can even set up the default org. Thank you. Connect as a T zero one. Thank you. Connect. I will now go to the setup and maintenance and go there to connect. <laughs> there is a profile for setting up as a default now. Right? Every user can set it up. Right? Whenever he logs in, what happens? He can even have one of the org as a default org. Right? Click on search now. Right? I will now go to the what? Manage percentage, INV percentage, profile percentage. Right? I am not going to have a profile now. Right? Manage inventory profile. So here, every user he can very well set. Right? Click on search now. Right? He will be finding a lot of profiles on the inventory actually. Right? So there is one thing on default. Right? So there is a default now. Inventory default org ID. Right? Click on it. I will not add one thing. Thank you, Monet. I will not click on plus. No, thank you. Is a site level and user level or two levels actually? Thank you, click on plus. And then here, I will not make it the user level. Thank you, the user level. And then the user name is what? PRC ten. Thank you, Monet. Is the PRC ten dot student. So go there, click on it. I am going here. And then I am going to do it as what? T zero one one one. T T zero one one. So whenever he logs in, this becomes his default. What happens? Your inventory org. Got it? Fine. So site level will be so uh, superseded by the user level. Every user can have it now. Thank you for seven close. Now let us know log out and log in and then see now. Thank you for log out and log in. Thank you for that now. Thank you no doubt. So let us know log out and log in. So the org will now come as what T zero one one for this user actually. So user specific default inventory org can be set up via the inventory profile options. Click on it. Don't go there. I am now slightly going how fast, but anything we are not understanding it immediately ask me. I go to the supply chain execution and then I go there. Click on it. I will now go to the inventory board. You know, click on the inventory board. You are going over there. So now I will now click on it. Now you can see the T zero one one has come. Now come. Fine. I will now go to the receipts. Fine. Go to the receipts. And then click on the receive expected shipments. And then I will now query on the PO now. The purchase order number is what? This one. Fine. Give a tab now. So P US one six four five four seven. Fine. Click on search now. Fine. I am going to make a gate receipt. It is a gate receipt. The gate fine. Go there. Click on it. So once when you make a gate receipt, 
what happens is the grn number gets created if you click on the show quantity it knows how much is expected now fine so the grn number is going to start on 3000 fine you order so there will not be any sub inventory for it fine click on create reset so by which what happens is two accounting entries will be get fine click on submit can now see a grn number coming up so 3001 is the grn number so now note it down on my what happens is this thing up and so the grn number fine order so grn fine is going to be 3001 now so when do we do it what happens is these are the accounting entries will be hit receiving inspector will be hit the contra entry will be accrual 22270 will be hit actually for this one 22270 will be hit actually only when you push it into receipt area only when you push it if you don't push it nothing will happen on the supply chain area there no doubt and go that so we will now go to this place now and go that what there no doubt so receive expected to come and click on done and then we will not deliver it so we are going to make a delivery now so click on it we will not perform put away now click on it we will not perform put away so put away receipts is the one i am going to pick to thank you for the put away i am not going to put away no so the register number is what 3001 is the one fine go there click on search now fine click on search i am not going to perform put away so select it and then click on put away i have no performing put away and then everything is coming so the, there is only one sub inventory here now fine click on it it gets put away so go there click on submit so go there click on submit the put away transaction is now getting created so once when it is created you can now see that what happens these two things will be done now fine the inventory material value account there is for the what happens your inventory valuation account from the financial side as well as my charge account from the purchasing side and then the contra entry is receiving inspection that's key here fine so the central entry will be coming only for a standard costing over here that will be taught by tiji lecture tiji will be teaching about the ppv so now we are working on a what happens your average costing so this account will not be hit. so from a procurement perspective the charge account to receiving inspection will be hit now upon delivery and then here receiving inspection to accrual will be hit upon receiving now now let us now push this transaction into costing area thank you one let us now go there click on the now fine let us now push this into costing area thank you one i will now click on the home icon fine click on the home icon and then whatever you receive you are going to push it now fine go to the what's called monitor process and then let us now push both into costing area so no no is there a way to see those account hit now or after no, pushing only cost? after uh, you create the distribution you can see the account okay now you cannot see it because upon upon any transaction the inventory no accounts are hidden transfer, yeah. transfer no on receipt from receiving to costing fine yeah. we are now going to push it into costing area so transfer transaction receiving costing we are now pushing it and then go there so it is not going to run now fine it is not having any parameters only for inventory to costing it will now ask for the cost stock when you are transferring it from receiving to costing no parameters are thank you consolidate now fine it is not running Running and then we'll now what happens? Refresh it. It will be coming over there now. Thank you, Monica. Transfer transaction from uh, receiving to costing is now getting pushed into the costing area. <clears throat> so go there and then click on the scheduling process. And then here I will now say transfer transaction from inventory to costing. For inventory to costing, we have to give the cost star name. For receiving to costing, there are no parameters. And remember, till now no account is it now. No account is it. For inventory costing, the cost star parameter is required. Answer. I will now put three zero one over there. Thank you, but tap now. And click on submit. So both the things have been pushed into the costing area. So after a break, we will now come and then create the distribution slot. Is it clear? No. So till now, whatever I have told, if it's all clear, now fine. Now we are ready to come to the complex part. Now fine. Can you give a green tick? Till now, whatever I have told, if it's clear, can you put a green tick? No, sir. Sir, it's still doubt. I think the doubt was that. On receiving, we thought accounting gets hit immediately nothing, on receiving. Nothing. No accounting oh. will hit on the inventory side at all. Okay, until you transfer it to costing. Yeah, That's only when you thing. transfer it and then create the distributions, then only the accounts are hit actually. Oh, uh, okay. And second doubt was the costing org when you created. Did you do anything extra because it's the same inventory org, right? So did no, you no, no, was no. any check you, box to you, make you it costing have org? Not seen the video at all. No, no, I missed it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you watch it, okay? So in the last week, last session. I have told you about what are the costing setups that you have to make. Oh, okay. okay. Now, Nana sir, it's a, it is a direct routing. Uh, you can directly run. A, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If it is a direct routing, what happens? So both that. receiving and delivery will be done together, actually. Right. So when the accounting uh, concurrent program is running, we can directly run. Uh, um, no, no, we are running both. Receiving. Whether it is going to be direct, both receiving, or, receiving, or, everything. First of all, it has cut, uh, hit the receiving area, and then afterwards the delivery area. Fine, you have to run the both concurrently. So no, no, why you are running the receiving both transaction? The... So until and unless, uh, uh, so suppose you have done receiving transaction, so uh, run your receiving crop program first, and once you done uh, complete your deliver, then only you run inventory to. No, 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 it is not right. like that. No, fine, they will all be scheduled actually. So these okay. contracts will yeah. be running on a fifteen minutes basis. 
So mm -hmm. in this cycle, it may not be accounted. In the next cycle, it will be accounted actually. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. When all these Thank concurrents you. will be running as a scheduled concurrent and uh, 10 minutes or 15 minutes or one hour basis, and then uh, if this is not getting accounted in this cycle, it will get accounted in the next cycle. Okay. Nana, no, no, what is the difference of receiving to costing and uh, inventory to costing? We are going to say, fine, after the break, we will not come and see. We will not have a break. Ah. What, what are the difference between receiving to costing and then inventory to costing? So only two guys have understood it. What about the others now, fine? They are all finding it difficult. Hari Priya, you are finding it difficult. Can you put X mark now? <laughs> Francis is also understood now. Ganesh, Ramanan, Azim, fine. They are finding it very difficult, actually, fine. So till now, we are not even touched the difficult part at all. <laughs> Only after the break, we are going to touch the difficult part. Okay. I will now make one of them as a, what's called a co-host now. Fine. <laughs> make no, no, sir. If you do only receiving, it will not uh, transfer anything to costing, right? When you, when you push it, then only it will go. No, fine. Upon no even, even after receiving, if you don't do that, put whatever away. you do in the inventory, once when you push whatever has been received in the gate will push into costing and then whatever is delivered to the inventory fine that concurrent will not push it to costing you may do it in different points of time fine it will these concurrents will be running periodically on a 15 minutes basis okay and in this cycle it might not have even costed fine on the next cycle it will not get costed on the next 15 minutes cycle. okay fine they don't work so let me leave and then come back now it is now 620 now fine by 635 we will now begin the next session so we'll now begin the next session by 635 and 15 minutes break fine 15 minutes break 635 pm india fine please uh, put the india time uh, in the browser put uh, 635 pm india it will not show you what is your time and then you can come on so it is approximately 15 minutes from now let me go and then come back i'll now leave meeting and then come back